My name's Rusty Sutton. I'm the redneck boat guy. I build two-cylinder racing outboard boats. I build the props to go on them, and we also sail a 33-foot catamaran named See Y'all Later. Hope you enjoy the channel. Good morning. This is Rusty, the redneck boat guy. I'm in the house this morning doing a little simple chore here, but I thought I'd uh, film it. Not everybody knows how to do this, I guess. it's uh, uh, To me, it's pretty basic, but a lot of people have never done it. So uh, speaking to a wide audience like this, uh, I believe that would be good to film it. What we're doing is I'm putting in three lights where there used to just be one over the bar. And uh, let me back up here and I'll show you the situation and some of the issues that we've got that we've got to overcome and how we're going to do that. So here we go. All right, well, what we're going to do is we're going to put those three lampshades right there up in that space. They'll go one, two, three. And right now, or, or before, there was only one wire coming out, right? So how are you going to wire those in? That, that's, that was my biggest challenge because this box, now I could tear this out and uh, run wires over or try to fish some out whatever but i've got a better solution you also you can't get to this from the attic because that's the ceiling this is just a box out right it's uh, the way they used to do it in fact there used to be cabinets right there so you can see over here uh in the uh kitchen where they're uh, you got the boxed out section and you got the cabinets well we wanted that to feel open and clear through there so we took all that down and uh, we want to put something nice and pretty there rather than just a, a single light like there was. So we've ordered these uh, really nice stained glass pieces and uh, we're going to install them. First thing you're going to have to do when you get this in is you got to put the light together, right? Well, here's a finished product where I've got the, the bulb uh, receiver in there and I've got it tied to the to the uh, chain and I chose to only use one link because I was holding it up there and looking at it and I'm thinking okay that's probably the right length. So it, this one's got a pretty nice little piece here. It's a uh, open and closable by screw link that you can make here but you can you can adjust these just as well and I'll show you the easiest way to open those and close those links here in just a second. But we think that's probably going to be the right height. We're going to try that. And uh, when you get these lights, you got to put it together, right? You've got to put the chain on it. You've got to screw the bulb receiver into the globe. That's pretty normal. And I'll show you how all that goes. Uh, also show you what happens inside the uh, base here. If you look at this base, this is how it normally installs, right? You take these two screws out, and then normally there is a... Uh, an electrical box that you need to screw something to well that's what this is for there's there's holes in that electrical box that you'll screw this i've got this one loose but you'll put that up in the box and you'll screw that uh see these holes right here you can use those to screw that up into the box and anchor it and then screw this to your light fixture it'll go into here and uh that's what normally holds your light fixture up, is this little piece right here. Well, me being a redneck, of course, I'm not going to use that. So what I did was I took this completely out, and then I uh, this that gave me my base. Now, what the wire is for, this, this uh, green and yellow wire, that is a ground, a base ground. So that grounds to your pipes, to everything. So you know that little third prong on your plug? I don't know if you can see it right here, but there's two blades and a prong, right? Well, that prong is what this goes to, so it grounds it. In case something happens to where a wire, a, a bare wire, touches any of your light fixture and, and makes it live, that bare ground would negate that electricity. It would throw a breaker. I'm going to use the two wires. Uh, that's all we need that comes up for the light fixture. See, there's a fixture, and you thread those Thread those wires up through there, and I'll show you how that goes. All right, so with this one being finished, you can see what I've done is I've screwed that that uh, receiver right here, right, fits into this base. 
and you get all this mess untangled. So when you get your light, it'll normally be in pieces. Sometimes it's not, sometimes it's all put together. But you wanna put the fixture on the here. So what you'll do in order is you'll take these wires and put them through that big hole, right in there. And then you pull this up through and, and it'll, it's got instructions that shows you how to do it. But you see those threads right there? That's what this goes on to. That mates up to that. So then what you do is take your wire and thread it up through the hole in the top of that. Because that's got to go up to the fixture. And then you pull it down. Pull that back up through there. And that's your threads to put this on. So my suggestion is to uh, put your hand under there and hold, hold the thread and then take this and screw it together. You just, let's see, there we go, now it's straight. And you see that wire's twisting? That wire's gonna twist as we go round and round because it's tied to the fixture. You see it doing that? Well, when you do that, now it's easy to untwist it here. If it was strung up through all of those uh, chains, you're making a mess. It, it's hard to get up in there. So you see it twisting right there? So I'm turning that, that one inside and we'll just let it twist till it gets tight. Every now and then we'll stop and kind of straighten it out a little bit there. So I got it twisted to where it's tight. All right, that's good and tight. So then what I would do is determine how high you want this thing. You want to be able to see the light well, but you don't want to be looking at the bulb. So if you get too high, you're just looking at that bulb glaring at you. So getting it the right height is critical. And you can change that. You can make changes as you go. Now I told you a while ago, you know, you can undo this, but you know, we're gonna need one of these links because I've chosen to put, I looked at it a while ago and I want one extra link besides this closable link in there. So this is the easiest way to handle these chains. It's really easy to do. Get you some uh, pliers that'll go across to both sides there of that, uh, of that chain. And there's the break in it right there, you see? So then you just take a, a screwdriver and pry it open and it just unhooks off of there. See what you got? You got it open so you can unhook it off of there. And if you need to put it back, do the same thing. Just put your uh, pliers across like that and hook your screwdriver in there. Just push it back down. But uh, that's how you change, take those chains and, and, and uh, change what they're doing. In fact, we know we're not gonna need any of them but that one that we've got on there. So let's take this one off in the same method. We'll take it off the base bridge across those two and just uh, bend it sideways and your lamp is loose and you got that chain off there. So they always send a bunch of chain uh, that you, and a lot of it you won't need. Sometimes you do, sometimes you need the full length of it depending on what, you know, if you're coming from a 10 foot high ceiling or whatever. But we're coming off about a seven foot high area so I'm not gonna need much chain to do it. So that's the basics of how to assemble the lights and get them ready to hang. And uh, let's see, from that, I guess we'll go on to uh, the method that I'm going to use and some of the parts I'm going to use to hang three lights instead of one up there. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit, uh, you know, we're putting those lights up, but I want to talk to you a little bit about why we chose what we chose as far as lights go in our kind of our theme in here. Uh, my mother was a stained glass artist and we used to live on Hummingbird Lane in uh, in, uh, on Toledo Bend Lake. And my, my mom has been passed several years now, but this is a prized possession of ours, this hummingbird. Uh, you know, the, the green we picked out and that's what we painted our breakfast nook was that color. And uh, this is like I say, a really special piece for us. So it, it means a lot. So we're kind of carrying that theme and the hummingbird theme, I guess, through our, uh, through our kitchen area and any of the stained glass uh, that we looked at, we kept that in mind and, and those kind of colors to make it look good. But I wanted to share this with you about my mom's piece and kind of 
why we chose what we chose as far as lampshades. All right, here I've got to set up to where uh, this is what we're going to do. Instead of trying to uh, string wires out to each one of these, I took this shelf that was out of this shelf unit, right? There used to be a shelf unit up there I told you about earlier. I took this shelf out and it stained exactly the same as all the rest of the wood in the house. So I'm going to use that. I'm actually using the bottom of it because it's got no scratches or anything on it. I'm going to use that to attach these three to and I'll go through that board and route out a groove on the back side to put these wires into the middle. They'll all be tied together but they'll come on the back side of this board and then to put the board up I'll move these and I'll put screws in here and here so you won't see any of the screws that attach it to the ceiling. So that's the goal. That's what we're going to be doing. You know I mentioned a while ago about a hummingbird and, and, and uh, what that means to us and if you look at these lampshades you know we chose these because they do they've got a little hummingbird on them and they're really nice tiffany pieces um, really nice but uh, that hummingbird means a lot to us so that uh, you can see him here Sorry. yeah our our parents uh, there's a lot of artistry i guess in our history and uh, we wanted to you know maintain that theme so a lot of the rugs that we've chosen have got some of her colors. You know, V. Holland Swain is the name if you want to look it up. I've got stacks and stacks of originals and uh, prints and all uh, on the walls. So uh, that matters a lot to us. I don't know, we like to say, I don't know why she picked me because I'm about as redneck as there is. You know, I hang around some pretty smart people. What I feel like I'm good at is, is pulling in information and using it maybe in a different way, a new way, something that makes sense to me, something I'm trying to do. You just look around and see how things work. So I just, I'm, I'm an observer. Anyway, I wanted to mention something about uh, our family and uh, you know, we <laughs> like to say my wife is Clorox and concrete. I don't know why she married me, man. <laughs> I'm about as redneck as I get. I, you know what? I took her to my river camp one time and and we were looking around there at that old muddy ramp putting in at the creek and she saw me calculating and figuring how to get that truck in and out of there without getting stuck and uh, i don't guess she'd ever been exposed to that being on the concrete all her life <laughs> so that's one of the things that uh, i guess attracted her to me a little bit is you know people call it common sense but i think it's more uncommon sense than uh, than common sense because you know you can have a doctorate degree in fact <laughs> I, in, in risk of, of losing my pure redneck status that I got, I want to tell you about this weekend, I hung out all weekend with an actual nuclear physicist, right? And he didn't just get the degree and go to pipe fitting or welding or something. He works as a nuclear physicist all his life. And now he's a manager over nuclear physics. So don't judge me because I know somebody that, <laughs> that is smart. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, you can have a degree or you can have wisdom. And, and my mother, uh, Sue, was the wisdom of the family. She, she was our matriarch, or is it matriarch or patriarch? Matriarch. matriarch, yeah. Patriarch's the guy. But she was the one everybody called in the whole family to say, hey, you know, I got this happening, what, what should we do here? So we honor our family a lot, uh, not only in, in love and, and care, but in the decorations in the house. And I just wanted to share that before I get back into this little video on, on how to install these little lamps. Okay, here we are out in the garage. I've got a couple of uh, things to do here. We figured out what spacing we want the lights to be on this board. So I'm gonna drill some holes and I'm gonna route a groove. This is the back side. So nothing special, just drill some holes for the wires or the three fixtures, and then we'll route down through there. I've chosen a uh, 5 eighths. I've got some pretty nice uh, little spade bits here that work well. I like them. So uh, like I say, I've already marked center and I've figured out our spacing of what we want. So I'm just gonna drill a couple of holes here and they don't have to be anything super accurate. It's just where the, it's where the wires are gonna go through. So 
So there's one of them. Let's hang it off of this side where it won't go through the table. And it kind of stops. Right All right, there's that one. We got one more. And again, this is a shelf out of that same shelf unit that we took out that I'm using because it's stained all the same. It'll make it look nice. All right, there's that. Okay. All right, I'm gonna make a router uh, slot between here and here. And the way I've got this set up is I got my router depth set to where it's gonna be just enough for a wire to go down into. And the way I set it up is I put it right over that hole, right, right in the middle hole, right there. Then I got this little saw guide. You don't have to do this. It doesn't even have to be straight. But since I had the guide, I went ahead and used it. So this router will run right up against that guide and I'll go up from this hole all the way down to this hole and make a groove in that wood for my, uh, for my particular installation. This is kind of uh, more than most people have to do, but uh, uh, let's see how that works out. All right, that's half of it. I'm gonna run the other half here. But you'll see what that does. That now makes me a groove for that wire. And most, most lights, you don't have to do this kind of mechanism. This is actually some woodwork that uh, is not required to put most lights up. Most of the time you won't have to do anything like this. So, got it routed out there. Got me a little groove that my wires can run in. And it's way straighter than it needs to be because it's going to be hidden behind all that. So, uh, let's unclamp it from the table here. And I'll show you where we're at. Show you what we got. Got to hang my clamps under here. Got a little bit of a woodworking shop. Not a big old mechanism, but I got a few things that Help me when I'm working on stuff like this. And again, this is woodworking. This this doesn't have a whole lot to do with just hanging a lamp. This is more of a little cabinetry that needed to be involved to, uh, in my particular case, most of you guys won't have to do anything like that. So another thing we're gonna do, I know I'm gonna screw this to the ceiling up there so i might as well go ahead and drill me a couple of holes around each one of these to put screws in and go ahead and pilot those screws well i can mount that i can mount that uh, plate with those two screws in alignment this way so probably should go in here for the screws that go up into the cabinet all right so let's do that take these off and let's see here. come over here screws to mount the uh, board up to the plywood about that. So that'll be just fine. Get it off there a little bit. Again, I'm not measuring anything here. All right, there's two of them. Get this one here. I'm pretty much eyeball quick here. There's no real, I can say nothing magic about that. All right, I like to have two different drills and one with, that's always got the bit in it. So I don't have to change to a screwdriver bit to make something to, to drill things in there. You see that's already clipped in the wood so I don't need it in that far. I just need to get them set so that when I get it up there in position, I can just run them in. And I'm not gonna pre-drill in the inside. I'm just gonna, just going to uh, run it right up into the plywood. It won't, it, it's not gonna crack out or break out or anything. So there, we got that, uh, got that set up. I got 
my holes for my fixtures, and I got a a runway in the back to bring my wires to. So one end is going to go up against the wall, and one of them is going to have a about a quarter inch gap the way it looks out. So you know you don't have to measure anything. You can take a stick, all right? And that stick is about that long, right? From there to there. And is this one longer or shorter? Well, this one's longer. So this is my long end. I need to know that when I go to put it up. <laughs> okay. There's a knot right close to this hole here. And there's a knot on the other end. So the long end is the one with the knot by it. That's all I got to remember. All right, let's go back in the house and uh, continue on. Get this thing put up. All right, I got a quick suggestion. If you're going to work with electrical work, you can, you're going to need a meter, right? You're going to need something to tell you if a circuit is hot or not. Because when you go into this wiring system up here, we want to make sure that's off. So I've got a fairly cheap little meter. It's not anything real expensive, but you're going to have to have that. So what I'm fixing to do now is I'm going to go up there and put my leads. I'll put these two leads in that wire uh, where the two wires are up there and flip the switch to make sure I know which switch it is. I know what it is, it's that one right there. But to make sure that those, that electricity is off when you go to uh, install your light. So get you a meter, uh, man, you'll really glad you did. You can stick it in a light socket, you can stick it in the wall, you can, you can test batteries with it to see if those one and a half volt AA batteries you've got in that drawer that's been there forever actually are one and a half volts anymore. Probably got a bunch of them you need to throw away. <laughs> so get you a meter. You can get them for $15 at the auto parts store. Uh, this one was probably about 30, it's a little bit bigger. But a $15, $20 meter will do everything you need to do. But if you're gonna go to anything that might be live, you wanna check it. Okay, what we wanna do now is let's get up here and let's check this, uh, this circuit, make sure that it's, uh, that it's not hot. So I've got this thing set on uh, AC voltage. Now it doesn't matter which red or black, which one I put in here. Now we've got white and black here, so I could go black to black and red to, red to white, and that'd be fine. All it's gonna do on your meter is it'll show a positive or a negative voltage. So it doesn't really matter. All right, now I can set this meter right there on that little chair and uh, go into these and come around and turn the light switch on. See if I can get it to stay in there by theirself and turn that light switch on and off to see if voltage is flowing in there. So that should have got it in there. Right now it's not showing any voltage. So I'm gonna come down and flip the switch on and off and see if that thing lights up. Yep, 122 volts on and off. We're back down. So I know that circuit is dead right now. I know that there's no power coming into that, so I'm free to work on it. But that's a really important check if you're gonna be messing with wires in a house, is to check and make sure there's no voltage on it. And I'll go ahead and take these little caps off right now and expose those two wires. All right, let's finish putting all this stuff together here. Let's see the things I don't think I'll need to get them off. Oh, I did wanna show you something here. You know, you can go in and read instructions and, and do all that, but I folded this part up because they always give you a little diagram, right, of what goes where and how it goes together. There's the socket, there's the little cap that it screws into, the chain and the wire, and the top mount. So what I do most of the time is I, you know, uh, I look at this and if there's something on here that I can't figure out, then I'll go through and read the instructions. Some people like to go through all the instructions and that's just fine. All right, here we are. Got a, a pair of electrical pliers. And what that is, it's got a stripper for all the different gauges, 22 to 10 gauge. Got a, that stripper's crimper there and you got a cutter right there. These aren't real expensive. Uh, you can get really nice ones, but unless you're a professional, man, that's just plenty of good of grade you're gonna need right there. I imagine they were $20, $25, something like that. They weren't real high. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this thing, like I say, leaving a little bit of slack right there. We'll cut them off. And this one here, let's see, I got that one for that. 
and that much for that so we'll cut it off there and this one I want to leave about the same amount in case I want to swag down a little bit and cut that off so now I'll get rid of all these wire and now we'll skin these back a little bit right we'll get these ready for the wire nuts so you got to separate them before you separate it a little bit like that before you put your uh, skinners on there and realize now when you're using these wire nuts let me see where they are I think they're back here yeah when you're using these wire nuts like that it's pretty far in there to where the wire goes and, and you've got this uh, orange area here that uh, protects that hot wire so what you like what the best thing to do is don't make these uh, these skint pieces very long a lot of people are used to making those really really long so you can twist them together and I actually like a little bit more than that because I will be twisting some of these together let's see yeah that one's better that might be long enough we'll see the end of these are just kind of pliers so there's nothing to them they're just kind of grabbers so I'll grab that one side there and push that other one down I don't have a real good fingernails but I can get it where it'll strip it apart just that little bit all right cut this one we'll cut these a little longer like that will help us we go to twisting all that together because we're all going it's all going to be on one circuit right okay so i do like to twist them just a little bit before i i try to combine them not much just a little i don't want to get them super tight because uh, we're going, we're going. I want them to be more pliable, and uh, the more, the less twisted they are, the more pliable they are. All right. Now let's get up here and see if we can place this board where it goes, and screw it to the ceiling. We'll get that settled and see if I can make this thing uh, all go together. I know these wires have got to go down down through that hole, so maybe I can line them up here. I know they're dead, so I don't mind getting a hold of them a little bit there. All right, I got them where I think I can plug that hole up, up over there. So now, what I got to do is I got to pick all this mess up with those two lights hanging from it. Now, like I say, I got them tied together where they can't come loose. And I need to get my screw gun close enough and like I say most of the time you won't be having to do all this woodwork to hang a lamp it's just kind of where I'm at in the world we did a lot of kitchen remodel and uh, I guess this is part of it all right so this has got to go up and it's got a, uh -oh, a little bit of an issue here the hole is not where those wires are the hole in this board right here is offset from those wires oh goody we got extra wire that's a great thing well, now i can come over here and go right back down through that hole that's awesome stroke of luck and the final product we got them hung all in a row there Gives a lot of light there to that bar, which is between the living room and the uh, kitchen. So, get them from this direction. All done.